In processing, we use geometry all over the place, so we're constantly keeping track of the x and y components of various points. So far, we've been using two separate variables, one for x and one for y, and that works just fine. But processing offers another way, a single data type called a p-vector. Both the p and the v are capitalized. A p-vector holds both x and y in one object. The p-vector doesn't do anything magical. Anything you can do with a p-vector, you could do with two separate x and y variables. The p-vector just makes it easier because it collects those things in one place. Let's see how to create and use a p-vector. Declaring a p-vector is really easy. You just give it the type p-vector and a name, just like an int or a string or a float. Again, remember that p, standing for processing, and vector are both capitalized. Once you've created one of these things, it's as though you had created a box that had two elements. One element is named x, the other element is named y. To get at the x element inside this p vector p, you write p.x, and you can assign to it or you can read from it. Similarly, if you want to read the y value, you refer to p.y, and you can read from it or assign to it. And that's all there is to it. A p vector is just a single object with an x and a y inside of it, and you can get at either one just by naming the variable, here p, followed by a period, and then either x or y. Note a couple of things. You can't have any spaces around the period, so it has to be variable name, period x, or variable name, period y. You can't change the names of these things. They're x and y, and that's all they'll ever be, and both x and y are lowercase. Well, that's really all there is to a p-vector. One reason why they're so useful is we can hand them to routines that use them as arguments. Let me show you an example of what I mean. Suppose that I want to draw a whole bunch of boxes. So I'll create two p-vectors. Here I'm calling them upper left and lower right, or just ul and lr. I'm capitalizing both of these because I'm thinking of them as global variables and it just seemed to look better to capitalize both rather than just the first letter. So these two variables are declared outside of all routines because they're globals. Unlike an int or a float, a p-vector is not made when you name it. You have to actually create it, just like creating an array. So let's see how we do that. Let's take a look at the little snippet of code inside of setup that is going to create these two p-vectors. First, I'll create the upper left. I say ul equals new space p-vector and then I give it two arguments, the initial x and y values. Now, ul holds a p-vector. So until I call new, ul is just a placeholder. It's just a thing that someday can have a p-vector created and stored within it. If I tried to reference ul.x before calling a line like this, I would get an error because there's no p-vector there yet. But using this syntax, I have created a p-vector, and now it has two values inside of it, 100 and 100. Well, let's do the same thing for lower right, and I'll put the lower right corner at 500, 500. Great, now I have my points. Let's use them inside of draw. What I'll do in draw is I'll simply draw a rectangle starting at the upper left x and y, and then I find the width and the height by subtracting the x's and subtracting the y's. Great, so now I've drawn a rectangle. For the next frame, I want to draw a slightly different rectangle. So I'm going to call a routine that I'll show you in just a second called move point. It takes one argument, which is a p vector, and it just moves it around a little bit. And I'll move the lower right point too. And that's all draw does. On the next frame, we come back in, we draw a new slightly different rectangle, we move the points, and so on every time we call draw. So what does move point look like? Move point returns void. In other words, it's a routine that doesn't return anything. Its name is move point because that's the name I made up for it. And the argument it takes is a p vector. It takes just one argument. It is the p vector. Inside of move point, I'll just move the p vector around. To the x value, I'll add a random number between minus 10 and 10, and I'll do the same thing for the y value. So this little skeleton of a program will draw lots and lots of rectangles, each one a little different than the one before. With just a few extra lines, we can turn this into a working piece of code. So let's do that and run it. Here's the whole program. It's what we just saw, except that there's a few extra lines in setup to create the graphics window, call smooth, and set the colors. 
So let's run it. And there we are. Every time that draw gets called, it draws a rectangle and then it jiggles the points around a little bit. We don't have any code in there right now that forces the box to stay on the screen. So over a long enough period of time, it might actually wander right off the window. But this demonstrates the idea. Here's a very minor variation on the last sketch. All I've done is add two new arguments to move point, the minimum and maximum amount by which I want the points to change. Let's run this. So what happens here is that the box starts around the full size of the screen. It gets smaller until it goes into the middle and then the left and right and top and bottom basically trade places and the thing grows again. And because it's random, each time we run it, it will look a little bit different. So let's run it again. And it's a very similar result, but it's a little bit different. Because we're drawing rects, we could just as well draw ellipses. So here in the code, I'll comment out the call to ellipse, and I will put a comment in front of the call to rect and run the program again. Because it's all random, if I run it again, we'll get a slightly different result. Let's see what that looks like. Well, of course, they're all variations on a theme because it's the same simple program but I'm sure you can imagine all kinds of variations to this that will create other kinds of images. To recap, here's the key thing. We have a new data type called a P vector, capital P and capital V. It has two things inside of it. One is named lowercase x and one is named lowercase y. We get at those things by typing P dot x or P dot y. I mentioned, of course, that there's also a P dot z, but when we're working in 2D, we generally just ignore that. If you find yourself doing a lot of geometry with lots of X's and Y's rolling around, consider using a P vector. I find that very often going to the P vector makes my code shorter, faster, easier to write, and easier to fix.